Okay, having, uh, oh, introduced uh, qualitative and quantitative risk analysis, we have uh, opened the discussion with the fact that quantitative risk analysis deals with quantities. We are dealing with numbers. We are dealing with hopefully accurate numbers because we are going to be doing calculations with them. And so, you know, I mean, we're going to do calculations. As we talked about earlier with regard to errors, you want to start out with accurate data. Otherwise, your processes are not going to give you the right result at the end. Garbage in, garbage out. So we want to know accurately what our risk is. And we perform calculations to get that answer. And we start with what is the potential loss. What is going to be the impact of what happens to us? What happens if we lose this data? What happens if we lose this system? What happens if this system is exposed? What happens if this um, database is breached? What happens if somebody accesses the data? What happens if somebody modifies the data? All of those things, and again, we, we have dealt with that in terms of the values in uh, information classification and looking at asset values. So, uh, having opened that can of worms, you know, what is our potential loss? So, uh, looking at a particular threat, like a flood, uh, let's talk about Katrina wiping out uh, New Orleans. You know, what's the, the potential loss if you wipe out a city? Well, in that case, $200 billion. So then you have to ask yourself, what is the expected occurrence? Uh, how often do you expect it to hit? Um, and I think I mentioned uh, Parker's analysis of... Uh, risk and the fact that there's no risk of getting a virus because getting a virus these days is pretty much an absolute certainty. So, um, you know, how often are you going to get hit? Uh, and again, turning to the uh, flood example, they figured that uh, the dikes were built to withstand 100 year floods. Uh, a flood that you would expect once every hundred years. Just came a little bit earlier than they thought. Well, these days with climate change, the floods are getting bigger, sooner, faster. Uh, you know, we've got to start looking at these things uh, possibly differently. Again, we want accurate figures. We want to have an accurate assessment. You know, how often is this going to occur? It's going to occur more frequently than it used to. So, you know, if you start with the bad data you're going to get bad results. Now, we come to an interesting calculation. Uh, we look at what is the single loss exposure? That is, you know, what, if, if this happens once, how much is it going to cost us? Multiplied by the annualized rate of return. How, uh, or, or occurrence, sorry. Uh, how... Frequently do we expect this to happen on an annual basis? 100-year flood? Well, that's, you know, one, once in 100 years. So, you know, 0.01%. Uh, so, we take our loss, anticipated loss, $200 billion, and multiply it by 1 100th, in other words, divide it by 100, so we get $2 billion. That's our annualized uh, loss. And so our uh, single loss uh, exposure or occurrence uh, times the annualized rate of occurrence gives us our annualized loss expectancy. So you can expect in that kind of situation, if, if our numbers are in fact, correct, uh, which we have already seen they, they aren't, but we will assume for the moment that they are correct, 
we, we do that calculation, we get a return of $2 billion a year. Okay, that means it's worth spending up to $2 billion a year in terms of flood pre prevention. Um, now, have you got that kind of money for that particular city? Uh, that's a different question, and maybe you should be thinking about building the city someplace else. But, um, that's the calculation that you do. That's the, the result that you get. Um, so, we, we can do that calculation. Because we can do that calculation, again, if we've got the accurate figures, it gives us guidance as to how much should we be spending on this by the way when when you look at that and and do those calculations accurately you can get some interesting results sometimes for example we talked about viruses viruses are considered a nuisance not a real uh, threat a real danger um there is uh an industry standard expectation that any single uh, virus infection is going to cost you about $500 in terms of cleaning it up, downtime, getting somebody in, whatever. Uh, what, you know, is that accurate? Probably not. It seems to have been pulled out of somebody's hat somewhere, but it's not completely inaccurate, so everybody uses it. Now, take that and look at your network and the number of computers that you've got and the number of viruses that are hitting your firewall every day. And, you know, it can be in the millions per day. So in the hundreds of millions per year, multiply that by, uh, you know, $500 per, occurrence um, and oh dear all of a sudden we've got a situation where we are looking at a hundred billion dollars per year possible loss well you know that that's far bigger than two billion dollars a year looking at flood prevention maybe we should be spending more on antivirus control than on flood prevention. Ain't that a kick in the pants? Uh, put the other way, our uh, antivirus controls are a lot more cost effective than our flood controls. Uh, but in any case, you know, this gives you guidance in terms of what you need to do or what you should be doing in terms of creating your security budget. Really interesting stuff. And we can start to put things into automated analysis tools, which tend to be a sort of a spreadsheet, adding up all of these different risk factors and the annualized loss expectancy for each risk when we've done those calculations. And, you know, what's our total there? What's our total outlay? What's our outlay for given areas in terms of protection of the com company what should we be doing um so uh interesting um and uh, uh it, it becomes an interesting tool we can't yet really automate this and one of the areas that i've been looking at uh in the past few years is uh quantum computing and the, and the implications for security here and it's interesting to figure out that once we get quantum computers, we can completely automate this. The computer, when we have that possibility, we'll be able to look at all the options and come up with the most effective budget for us if we can do the full quantitative risk analysis.